I was totally surprised that resource management isn't a mechanism on the geek. It literally isn't. Everything has resources. Yeah. And resources are just something to spend, right? So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, oh, well. I like resource management. So do you I. Hey, folks. Welcome back to the Dice Tower. I'm Sam. I'm JT. And this is our bottom five resource management games. That is to say, our numbers 10 through 6 of our top 10 games in this category. What is resource management? Yeah, it sounds like a job. Well, it is. I should have put column bar on here. Dang it, I didn't. Um, no, just kidding. Resource management is when you collect resources to spend, to get other things, to mm -hmm. get victory points. Is there to... is there a minimal number of resources in the game to be called a resource to management? be called a resource management game? No, I mean every game. 90% of games have some kind of resource. Sure. It's the question is, is, does resources play heavily into the game or sure. not? I guess that's kind of... Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Resources are not just present. They are a major cog in the wheel. Sure. Yeah. Yep. I got some fun picks. I had a yeah. good time with this one. I had some, some very I, interesting ways to use resources. Yeah, I think so. The same with me. My heaviest game... Well, no, let's start with average. I'm sure you have gone far and above and away as normal. My average was 2.39. Funny enough, mine are all very close together except for one, but my average is 3.08. Oh, that's not bad. And it's dragged down by one game. My lowest is a 2.11. What? And my next lowest is a 2.84, and then it's all up from there, but... But really, they range from 2.84 to 3.58, so it's a very 3.5 centered range. Okay, 3.5. My heaviest is a 3.11. My lowest, my lightest, is a 1.66. So it's super light. It has two resources: a piece no, of wood and a stone. No, it actually okay. has three resources. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is our bottom five. That is to say, numbers 10 through six resource management games. Let's hit it. All right, my number 10, 2.27 is the complexity for this one. And this is a game that we learned how to play on the cruise. Did we we learned it, it to play it four times on the cruise? <laughs> Multiple times yeah. on the cruise because we never could finish That's it. true, yeah. <laughs> but this is my number 10, First Rat. First Rat, a good friend of mine, Ilya, taught me how to play one day, and we played a full game of it then. And I was kind of enamored with it. And because uh, it, it kind of flew under the radar for a yeah, lot of people. It's a nice game. It's a very fun game. And it mm -hmm. kind of flew under the radar for him, but it's one of his favorite games. And so he taught me how to play it along with a couple other people. And then I, I loved it, had a great time. And so I tried to teach um, Jess and my family how to play it. We didn't finish in time. Then I tried to pull JT in on it on another day. Didn't finish in time because we were trying to scoot it in before dinner. Mm -hmm. Finish it, the game or eat some lobster. Which yep, one do you exactly, want? Exactly, exactly. So, but this is a really cool resource management game, in my opinion. There's a lot more than just resource management going on, but I think at its core, that's exactly all it is. You're you're moving yeah. up this track and that's you're good. collecting different resources and you're using them to. Uh, move yourself around on a separate track down here, or you're trying to build different components of the rocket ship that's going to eventually take you up to the moon, or you're using your cheese to um, uh, uh, stock the uh, pantry of the rocket ship, so to speak, so that the uh, mice will have, the rats will have something to eat while they're up in, up in space. There's a lot of different ways yeah. that you can use the different resources that are there. Um, but it's just how everything kind of coalesces together that makes it really fun for me. It's it's a very light game, yep. but there's a lot going on, and yep. it's really fun. Um, so that's my number 10, First Rat. That is a good pick. That's definitely central in that game in yes. multiple ways. Absolutely. So I like that a lot. My number 10 is the lightest game on my list, and all the rest go from there, but I was very happy to put this one on the list. This is a very fun game. It's 2.11. It's from Gray Fox Games. It's called Arcana Rising. Oh. Um, this is a really cool huh. game where you are drafting cards, like closed hand drafting, 
And on your turn, you uh, are either playing one of those cards down in your tableau, or you're running your engine, basically, and collecting resources. And hmm. really, this entire game is about collecting five different types of spell resources, charms and alchemy and blood art and i don't know what the other two are but you're collecting these resources and you're constantly like if i play a card down in my tableau i'm spending resources off of here um so that i can run that tableau later to get more and yeah. and there's a moon phase a really cool moon phase that goes across the middle so that every turn every card you draft because you're going to have a, a full hand of five cards of draft so the first card you draft you get to choose to play it in your tableau or to run your green and red engine and get those resources hmm. or whatever the moons may tell you. So it is legitimately collecting those six different or those five different resources, spending them wisely, collecting more of them and, hmm. and piling them up at the end. So it's a very cool. Never um, played this game. Very, very cool little engine. Um, and I really like it. Engine building and resource management, that usually goes hand in hand. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and like I said, everything, it's all about your, your things are little potions. Uh, you've played it a long time ago at a really? game night. I, I taught it to you. I don't, I don't remember. I believe I did. Well, maybe. Um, uh, but I'll... you just have these little potions, and they're all in all these different places. But I'm spending two alchemy ones to create three, you know, charm ones to do this and do that. And then they all have a conversion at the end for points. But... Combo-tastic, as you like to say. Yep. As you like to say. As, My number 10, Arcana we... Rising. This is a really fun game. Cool. This is the one that comes with the abacus for scoring. The little tiny... I don't remember. Okay. Cheers. I'm telling you, man. My memory ain't <laughs> what it used to be. I know. Happens when we get old. <laughs> My number nine is the lightest game on my list. It is a 166. Oof. It is actually a racing game. Is it a game? No, okay. Yeah, it's absolutely a game. <laughs> it's a racing game. One of my game favorite with games. It's a right. racing game, and you have to use your resources as you go around. Okay. It's called Jamaica. Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You're racing around the island of Jamaica, you yep. and your little pirate ship, and you have to uh, pick up and uh, you pick up resources by what card you choose to play. Uh, the person who is the leader of the round rolls two dice. They can choose what die goes in where. One goes in the morning spot, one goes in the evening spot. And then your card has two icons on it, one on the uh, left and one on the right. The left is always the morning, the right is always the night, and that's where you generate your resources. As you're moving around the island, though, there are some spaces where you have to um, uh, spend your food because your days at sea. Other spaces you have to spend your gold because your days in port. Um, and then there are cannon. There's gunpowder that is also mm -hmm. another kind of resource yep. that you can use when people uh, pull up alongside you and try to broadside you. So there are uh, three resources, food, gold, and gunpowder, and you have to use all three of them. Um, and it is literally central to the entire mechanism. If you don't get you don't know when to play the right card. If you don't know when to... Can't um, keep your ship moving. Yeah, you cannot <laughs> keep your ship moving. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. it's definitely a central mechanism to the game. Uh, and it's also a really fun game at that. Beautiful game, too. Artwork is amazing. Uh, but that's my number nine, Jamaica. Copy. My number nine, unfortunately, came up on a couple of other lists lately. But I just love it for its resource management. And for the way it works with resources. And that's from Burn Island Games. And that's In the Hall of the Mountain King. Yeah. Um, I know we've talked about this yep. a few different times. Yep, but yep. in this game, you're collecting trolls into your troll moot. And they are really what's giving you the resources. And they have a really cool mechanic where mm -hmm. your troll moot's basically this pyramid that you're creating. But when you play a new troll card, you're getting resources from that troll and the two trolls that are underneath it. And if those two trolls have trolls underneath it, then you're getting resources from each of the trolls underneath there as well. Um, but you're also, you have a general supply of resources, but most of your resources are on the trolls. So hmm. you're spending from off of them so that when you place a new troll, you can get more resources. Because yeah. if you place a new troll and they still have resources on them, you don't get any more. So. Yeah. It's really balanced on whether or not you're going out and building a cavern. Um, also, the caverns, there are, I think, stone and steel and then, like, dragon stone or something like that. And depending on what kind of material you build your cavern out of is how many points you're going to get for that cavern. 
hmm. um, as you go. But yeah, there's a lot of resources in this too. You have the three building materials. You have crystals to cast your magic spells. You have carts to move the um, statues around the board. Hmm. Um, I'm sure you have there's one or two more beyond that. But yeah, this is a really fun game, and it's all about mining and getting those materials yep. so you can build your under mountain. Uh, I have an entire layer. I have an entire playlist on Amazon Music of dwarf metal. There you go. There you go. But this is all trolls. You're not dwarves. You're trolls. No. The dwarves are there. No, the dwarves are not there. The trolls they, ate them. They, no, the they trolls didn't. Are the, the dwarves are the food source. The dwarves are waiting <laughs> to attack to take their mountain home back. No, that's the other game. Oh. You haven't played that one either, right? No, uh, I haven't. That's my number eight is a new game from this year, and it is a game that I didn't know if I was going to like it at first. I was taken by the uh, component quality of it. I was taken by the uh, interesting nature of the worker placement of it, but you are really trying to manage uh, three different kinds of res no, I'm sorry, four different kinds of resources in this game. And it's basically a pick up and deliver game as well. Mm. And that is Mistwind. You are flying aeronautical whales around. Yep. Picking up different kinds of resources from one place, dropping them off at the other. And you're uh, basically using different resources to construct more whales, which doesn't really make sense. Um, sure. And feeding them. I don't know. <laughs> <You're> feeding, <laughs> feeding them. They're growing them. up. They're breeding. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to do, uh, you're you're building more whales. You're building more outposts. And your your part of it is you're really trying to connect different parts of the board to different things. And that's more of an end game scoring type thing. But while the game is going on, you're using your resources to do a number of different things. Um, and we've already mentioned the building of, of different uh, units and resources and that kind of thing, but you're also using them to uh, use other kinds what of... What are the resources uh, in this game? I can't think of... The what. resources are mushrooms. No, I'm sorry. Uh, steel, wood, gold, and krill. Oh, yeah. Those are the four resources that you okay. have to manage. Um, the, res the, the goods that you're yeah, taking back and forth are goods, not resources. So yeah. They're just goods that you're picking up and delivering somewhere else. Uh, but the four resources are uh, steel, wood, gold, and uh, krill. Krill is basically used for movement. Mm -hmm. um, money is you used in a number of different ways. Sure. Um, and then steel and wood are used to build um, more ports or outposts, rather. And uh, sometimes they can also be used to build more... Um, Whales, yep. transports. Definitely a very interesting so, uh, theme. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely interesting theme. Um, so, but it, it's it's very much a resource management game, and I I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. All right. Well, one thing that's better than flying whales <laughs> is my number eight, and that would be space bees. <laughs> space bees. My number eight is apiary. apiary. That's correct. Very good. Um, in apiary, you're collecting pollen and wax and mm -hmm. honey and fiber and something else um and you're using that to build your space hive yeah um in this game's interesting enough because your hive can only hold so much on water of course water everything needs water yep. um you're you can only hold so much in your hive to start with and you have to continue to build your hive putting farms and putting other buildings out there that do different things um, but the farms will hold more water or more resources yep. as well as. Um, but yeah, you're just collecting these. You're trying to turn them in for honey. You're trying. You're trying to use all the different types of material to build yeah. your hive out. Um, to to make it very short. But sure. Yeah. Um, apiary also has a really cool mechanic where you're putting your bees out there, and every time you put them out there, you know they can bump other workers or whatever. But when they come back to you, they get older because um, your bees can only work for so long before they get old and die and then you have to get more bees but yep, yep i really like this game um apiary and the components are really cool yes absolutely good pick i love that game um it's a little what's the complexity of, of that one um it's not fairly remember? light 295 295 right yeah that's not three. bad yeah, that's yeah. not bad yeah that's that's pretty much right in my wheelhouse yeah. but um i didn't i didn't add that to my list that could have easily been a been a crossover for us though but 
I've only played it a few times, a couple yep. of times. 10 4. My number seven is a 2.04 for complexity. And uh, this has Vincent Dutrait's artwork on it. But that is, uh, well, that is the first thing that pulled me in. Before that, I actually got contacted by uh, some friends of friends. And they said, hey, what do you think about these cards? And they showed me the cards that were for After Us. Mm. And they were talking about the um, how the, the windows, the, the frames all fit together and and they were just made, from a graphical point of view, does it make sense? Does it, does it look okay? Is it not confusing? That kind of thing. But when I first saw that mechanism of how you generate your resources, of having to fit in these different frames and what you include inside each frame by piecing these different cards together tells you what you generate for that round uh, for resources. And then you use those resources to attract new uh, primates into your um, your tribe, and uh, so really, resource management is is all about it. Uh, but the mechanism that was used to make those resources is really what brings it to the forefront in my mind when I talk about resource management. Are they lost round around those resources? No, they are not. You keep them. Yeah, you you can you can keep them. Uh, and it, I haven't played know, this. They game. carry over, um, and you can use them for not just bringing new uh, uh, primates into your tribe. Although that is the main thing that you're using them for, uh, you can also use them. There's usually uh, three different special abilities that you can fire off at different uh, in different phases of each round, uh, and you use those resources to do that as well. Nice. Um, usually, those are batteries. You have uh, grains, fruit, flowers, and batteries. Nice. Those are, That's, that works out. Those are well. You just stick the battery on your tongue when you need a jolt. No, it's these are like going. these are these are like uh, Planet of the Apes dudes. Yeah. These are like they advanced. Eat, they eat they, grains and batteries. Yes. That, well, they don't eat batteries. <laughs> they know how to use the batteries. Oh, all right. All right. So that is my number seven. After us. Nice. My number seven is the uh, same time frame. No. <laughs> My number seven is post-apocalyptic, <laughs> in a different time frame. Um, my number seven is 51st State. Oh, that's a good one. Um, 51st State is a very, very tight little engine builder. Um, mm. And the reason I asked you about after is because it the kind of way you say it, but the way 51st State works is the beginning of your turn, everybody's going to get a draft one card, plus you have the cards in your hand, but you're going to run your production engine. You're going to get mm -hmm. two guns and a gas and a, um, you know whatever else the other resource I can't think of them right now I'll think of them in a minute but you'll get two guns and a gas and, and a couple of little little guys and then you'll get these tokens uh, which are called contact tokens and they come in blues grays and reds mm -hmm. um, and those determine what you can do throughout the entire round and you're all taking turns spending out but once you're spent out um, you're done and even if you if you complete if you run out of cards and you got a couple of you got some things left or whatever else it doesn't matter at the end of the round you lose everything hmm. um, that you start with so the next round you start back up again with a whole new set of resources based on what your engine looks like currently oh, that's cool. um, and then you try to funk make that all function and it is really cool it's very tight yep. um, it's I mean you're you're only getting a couple of resources at the beginning and you're thinking oh I'm not going to do much you know what I mean and then it yeah. just starts to build and build yep. and build and it's just really cool um, the way that everything works together yep so I really like 51st State um, the last thing you get is bricks um, of course because you have to build things um, but yeah 51st State is a great great uh, resource management game I totally agree with that that's a good pick well done all right. Number six is Direct a crossover. Two point six two. What's up? Oh, never mind. First crossover? No, I was gonna sure? say direct crossover. Direct crossover? No, no, no I don't think so. I don't have any more two point I don't think so. Uh, don't Champions of Midgard. Champions of Midgard. And he got real quiet because I don't think he thinks this is a resource manager. No. It, it is. is. It has some resource management. It absolutely is. Absolutely. Everything is a resource in Champions of Midgard. Even your Vikings are, are resources. Mm. And even your Vikings, after they have gloriously died in battle, if you have the expansions, there you go. are resources as well. 
Everything is a resource. It is a worker placement game, absolutely at its core. But the reason you're placing your workers out at these different places is so that you can either go fight something or gain some kind of resource. And those resources can be more Viking dice or, you know, rudimentary like food or lumber or something to that effect. So it is definitely a worker placement game in which you are generating those resources and then you're using those resources to go and do a number of different things. Mainly, go fight stuff. <laughs> um, that's really where the, the resource management ends. But you use resources to build you re, uh, boats, you use them to sail, because uh, you mm -hmm. got to put, put, pay your Vikings, um, or feed your Vikings mm -hmm. on, on the them. voyage. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then you also can, um, uh, when they die in, in combat, you get these tokens, if you have the Valhalla expansion. You guys heard it here first. He has champions in Midgard that's all resources, and it's his number six. He hates this game. I don't hate it. <laughs> I like it because it's a worker placement game oh. more. Oh, I see. So if this is a worker placement list, it would be higher. Agreed. But it's resource management, which is to a lesser degree what the game is about. Um, but those tokens that you get when your when you're, uh, Vikings die in combat then can also be used to purchase different things yep. in the uh, Valhalla boards. So there's a lot of resource management going on here, and it is a great game. So it's my number six. Champions of Midgard. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Puts a wonderful game on there at number six. <laughs> All right. Well, my number six, I don't know if this will be a crossover or not. Actually, crossover-wise, I don't feel like, I feel like this This might be one. This might be the one, but I don't know for sure. Okay. Um, my number six is a 3.45. Any, any chances? Five. Nope. Nope. Okay. My number six is Scythe. Um, oh no! Scythe is one oh, of the no. coolest ways to actually manage resources. In this game, it does it um, much different than a lot of other games. Because as you're creating oil or you're creating steel or whatever else, that stuff stays on the board, basically with the area before it stays with you. Almost. I mean, yeah. you can move it, but if somebody else takes the area over, they, they get the it. resources that are yeah. sitting there. So this isn't resources that you get to take to your board and collect. This is resources that you have to control to spend at the right time. So, so it's, it's resource protection, not resource, resource management. Well, it has to be managed. Somebody's got to do the farming first. <laughs> you got to farm to get it, and then you got to hold on to it to feed somebody to do an upgrade. But um, yeah, I really like the way that Scythe does the resources. Mm -hmm. I think I think if Scythe did the resources any other way, it probably wouldn't even be it wouldn't be Scythe. Um, it would be a completely different game at that point. Well, it depends. Some... If they named it Scythe, it would be Scythe. Yeah, that's right. But it definitely wouldn't be the same type of game. True. Um, but anyways, I love the way that Scythe, how you have to manage those resources, hold them, move them with troops mm -hmm. or with your guys. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so my number six for this list, last one on this list, this half, is Scythe. I, I pl I've played Scythe a lot. I just... It... It... The artwork and the way the board looks, it looks like it's more conflict oriented and mm -hmm. really isn't. It's not. And that's what kind it's of about put resource it, management. It's I know, about it's definitely your, a Euro game, but yeah. I mean, it, it just it had that look of being area control, area conflict, you know, that kind of stuff. And it, it pr just presented itself as something that it ultimately wasn't. And that's put a bad taste in my mouth. And now, if I play the game, I'm happy to play the game, don't get me wrong. But if I play the game, uh, the only way I can enjoy the game is if I try not to win. No. Or if I don't try to win. That's If I'm not busily, uh, busy about trying to um, keep up with everybody else, I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. Um, and I found that that's how I enjoy the game. I let everybody fight. I let everybody do everything that they need to do. And I just try to be in the background hmm. and do my little thing, go. not try to win. And everybody leaves me alone, and I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. That is that. You can go right over to the flip side right now and watch our top five because I have scheduled them both to go live at the exact same time like I always do. Yep. So give us a comment here. Tell us what you think um, here on the Dice Tower. Let us know. Give us a uh, like. Give us a subscribe over here on the Dice Tower because they need you. Yes. They need, they need you. Just do it. And then, after you've done that all over here, head over to the flip side. Yeah. Do the same thing over there. 
Pretty please. And we will see you on the flip side. Take care. See you later.